Hello friends, we'll be talking about green buildings and their role and importance in the sustainable development. I think we have to understand the context of buildings. Buildings are primarily a man-made environment. They are not dead entities. They are all living. They are breathing. Buildings are being used by human beings and all human activities are performed within the buildings. So building remains vital for human growth because they provide optimum or worst conditions in which we live. Accordingly, building makes you healthy and sick. We have to understand 80% of our lifespan is spent within the building. Building consumes 50% of energy. Buildings are consumer of resources. They are generator of waste. And they have huge carbon footprints. The global warming is primarily the outcome of the way the building is being designed, building is being constructed, and they are being operated. So they are having not local impact. They are impacting the global sustainability. Buildings are integral part of human growth and development, and they shall continue to define how the society has grown over the time. But let me also explain to you, a green building makes living more meaningful. A green home gives you a quality of life. A green hospital cures patients very quickly. And a green shopping center make a business sense. So large number of buildings are to be constructed. And considering the context, the India is urbanizing at a very rapid pace. The studies have shown that India needs 700 to 900 million square meter of built up space every year to meet the growing needs of housing, work, industry, entertainment, healthcare, education, etc. Therefore, I think we have to understand the buildings have to look, be looked into in the context of their implication and their role in not only consumption of resources, generating of waste, you know, and we have to look at the, how we can make these buildings, you know, least consumer of energy, resources, etc. Buildings, when you look at the construction sector, that has a huge implication for the country as a whole because construction sector contribute 9% of the GDP. One sixth of the total India's popul uh, the working population, that's around 35 million, is engaged in the construction sector. So buildings are being added, and it is said in the year 2004 and 5, 41 million square meter of built up space was added, you know. So we find these buildings have their own connotation in the context, the way they are consumed energy. And it is said that the buildings consumed 47% of the total energy of the India, whereas industrial sector consumed only 28%. So they, therefore, we find the building are largest consumer of energy. Out of this energy which are consumed by buildings, you know, there are two factors which co contribute largely to this consumption. The responsible are, you know, the lighting and heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So therefore, it's said, you know, if we are able to have our system of lighting, air conditioning, ventilation, well thought of and energy efficient, we can cut down the energy consumption in the existing building by 20%. Studies have also shown if you design your building as green building and follow the ECBC code, you can cut down your energy consumption level by 40%. Let's understand how this is consumed. It is said 70% of the you know, energy is consumed globally by developed countries, which have only 22% of the population. 
whereas to only 30% energy is consumed by rest of the world which account for 78% of the population a chinese consumes 3 and 1/2 time more energy than an indian whereas american consume 11 time more energy uh, than an indian so therefore we still are at very low level of energy consumption but as we are urbanizing as we are technologically getting advanced you know our energy consumption levels are rising let me also explain to you in this context the energy consumption by building it is said globally half of the total energy in the world is consumed by buildings when i talk of top of buildings i'm not talking of the buildings in the present context i talk of in the you know the life cycle costs right from the the day building is consumed and you know it is demolished that's the life cycle costs you know we are looking at and it is said only 10% of the total energy goes into making of building whereas 90% of the energy goes into you know making building operational that we look into you know when we go ahead with that so there is i think enough opportunities for us to make our buildings more energy efficient you know and how you can do it you know i, I think the options could be that you use energy efficient technology you have a design kind of mechanism by which you design buildings which are least consumers of energy then you use climate as one of the mechanism to dictate the designs and also you can retrofit the existing buildings and last but not the least if you design green building surely you are going a great service to the nation and a service to the community by reducing the energy consumption level let's also get into further you know what buildings have their impact in terms of environment and resources it is said 1/6 of the total water is consumed by buildings 1/4 of the wood which is harvested goes into making of building 1/3 of the raw material is consumed by building and half of the energy which i have said is consumed by building in addition you know 1/3 of the total uh carbon dioxide emission can be attributed to the buildings and 40% of the municipal waste are the outcome of the waste generated by the buildings so therefore when you look at you know that buildings promote you know ozone depletion in addition i said buildings make you sick and building makes you healthy and it is said one third of the people which are visiting hospital are because they are living in a bad environment so therefore i think that remains the criticality of building that why the building needs to be looked into we have seen how the construction sector is being is impacting our environment how it needs to be looked into initially there were three parameters for any building to be seen that building must be made very cost effective number 2 it must have a highest quality thirdly it must be built in minimum time that was the three parameters you know which guided the development but subsequently it were found in addition to the three factor you know building have implication environment resources and ecology and building have not local footprints but also global footprints so accordingly the concept of buildings have changed right from three to these nine parameters you know i think we have to look critically if buildings are you know have implication in terms of resources energy global warming and then there is need why these not these buildings should become sustainable and for that i think a new field is emerging and that's called a green building which we will be discussing now what is a green building green building is a building you know which makes optimum use of your site it takes care of the natural elements it enhances the place where it's located it is trying to optimize the basic resources but without compromising with the quality of life 
It is, you know, it is trying to make you energy efficient, water efficient, but not at the cost of your quality of life or inside comfort, you know. Green building, let me also explain to you, have helped in reducing energy consumption without your sacrificing the comfort levels. And this reduces pollution, this reduces carbon footprints, and this also low down the waste generation. So they are the objective basically looking at energy efficiency, water efficiency, and then you look at the, you know, using lo a local material, you are promoting wa waste reduction, you are uh, cutting down the toxicity, and you are providing the best of indoor air quality in order to pay, make people healthy, you know. So I think the green building helps in leveraging the smart growth, they make the development sustainable, and they make building operationally efficient, you know. Since buildings are going to be there minimum 30 to 50 years, I think you have to make a decision to have a building designed right in the beginning rather than looking lately as a retrofitting process which will be more expensive. The benefits of the green building can be divided into two parts, the tangible and the intangible. Tangible remains, you save energy up to 50 percent, you save water up to 40 percent. That means you are reducing the operational cost and the day one, right, when you have a green building and you occupy it, you will have a lower water bill and a lower energy bill. That means your building will start saving that kind of things. And if at all you think that, you know, the building is costing more, this will be recovered in the shortest possible time. And you, and uh, let me also explain to you that buildings, green buildings make a commercial sense because you are going to be having more benefits than what you invest. Secondly are the intangible benefits. They are benefits in their own right, you know, but you can't quantify it in terms of money because you are promoting environment, you are promoting health and safety of the people, you know. Once you promote healthy environment, people living inside will remain healthy and they will become more productive, they will become less sick and they will contribute to your profits, etc. So I have already said the green building can lead up to 50 percent of saving energy, 40 percent of water, 30 percent, you know, carbon emissions. And it is said that one million square feet of green building can save three megawatt of electricity. Similarly, you know, that one million square feet of green building can reduce carbon footprints by 8,000 to 12,000 tons. And this, please look at, when you save energy, when you save water, that means that water will have to be less drawn from the ground, and then you have less thermal plants or other, you know, mechanism to generate an electricity. So when you have consumed less water, there will be less wastage. That means you will be having, you know, thinner kind of service network which will be required to feed. And that means you will be economized on the development of infrastructure and city will become more sustainable. So therefore, I think it is not benefiting individual it's benefits society, it's benefits state, it benefits community, and it's a win-win situation for all the people. All these four parameters which have shown in the downward direction indicates clearly there is a saving in energy, carbon dioxide emissions, water use, and solid waste, you know. This is a table which gives you what is the cost. Normally, say, people say that green building cost more, you know. I think the, when the first green building was made, that's a CIA Godrej building in Hyderabad, it costed 18 percent. And the, please note it, the recovery period was, the, whatever money was spent, it was recovered in seven years. Last Susan One Earth building, which have a footprints of, you know, more than five lakhs, which was only costed two percent and the money 
the excess cost was recovered within two years. So, if you start designing the building right in the beginning and if you follow the guidelines, I think you can cut down the cost to a greater extent. Let me also explain to you, when we look at the total cost of the building, we look at the life cycle cost. It's only 10% of the total cost which goes into making a building. 1% goes for, you know, maintenance, etc. Whereas 89% cost you incur for the operation of the building, what you spent on its energy, on its water and other things. We are only looking at 10%, we are not looking at 89%. And that's what green building looks at. You know, they are more focusing not only 10%, they are focusing only 89% so that you reduce your buildings. What green constitute a green building? Green building is nothing. It's not a rocket science. You know. It's a very simple thing. It's a working with nature and you are trying to make best use of the nature. And it is said there are five major elements which the, you know, God has given us. They are Panch Mahabhuta, what we call it. This is earth, water, energy, air and sky. That is the Prithvi, Jal, Agni, Vayu and Akash. They are all five elements which goes into making of the green building. All they are being used, you know, because you are having as, you know, sustainable side, you promote water efficiency, green building, take care of the energy efficiency, best of indoor air quality, and the natural light is given not to replace the artificial light in order to make it sustainable. But how you go for the green building? I think the first thing is that you look at the climate. When you have a site, please look at which part of India you are located because design shall be dictated by climatic condition. That's air temperature and humidity. And already National Building Code has divided based on the study and analysis carried out of the prevailing climate into five parts. It's a hot and dry, warm and humid, moderate and temperate, cold, which is cloudy and sunny, and a composite. So each climate has its own requirement of heating, lighting, ventilation, and thermal comfort. And accordingly, when you are dealing in hot area, you'll have to cut down, you know, the sun and make sure that you don't get in heat. So first fundamental will be for all hot area, you will minimize the heat gain. And if at all there is a heat gain, you please make sure that he is lost at earliest. That's the part heat and dry. In case of warm and humid, in addition to fighting the heat, you have to take care of the humidity. For that, it's a coastal area where you have to take care of the wind so that wind takes care of the humidity. Thirdly, in moderate climate, when there is not much hot or there is not much heat or much cool, you know, then accordingly, you will adjust your building. But in case of cold, you know, please make sure you do not place your building on the northern side, but you will put your building in such a manner that you have the maximum gain of the sun on the east side, west side, and the, northern, uh, the southern side. And then there is a composite like us, you know, where we have extreme heat and extreme cold. So therefore, in summer, you will have to cut off the sun. In winter, you have to bring the sun. So these are the fundamental principle based on which you can have the design process. Once you have a site, once you know the climate, and then please look at what is the behavior of the sun, the orientation, where is north, south, east, and west, because each side has an implication. Sun in the summer revolves around north, you know. It rises in the northeast, sets in the northwest. In winters, it revolves around south. That's in the rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest. In the summer, sun is for a longer time and it has, it travels around 280 degree. Whereas winter, it is, you know, sun is for a shorter time and it only has a period of 102 degrees. So I think you look at east side, which has north side, never have a sun. South side has the maximum sun. 
east is the rising sun, west is again the dying sun. So, in summer you have to avoid the west, south east side remains very, very important. Then you take care of the ventilation, air movement and you have to place your building so as to have best indoor air quality. When you look at the energy, there are two kinds of energy a building consumes. One is embodied energy, the energy which goes into making of building and the other energy which is, is required for making the building operational. This is, you know, a chart which tells you that only 15.7% energy goes into making of building, whereas 10.2% is energy which for, is required for, you know, any uh, changes or any repair you do it, but 74% of the energy is required for making the building operational to provide you adequate amount of quality of life and to keep you at the most optimum condition. So therefore, I think if you are using the natural air, light and ventilation, you are not only looking at the initial cost but you are looking at initial energy, but you are reducing the operation energy. So, for initial energy, you will use those kind of material which have minimum energy consumption required for their production. And that brings us to the conclusion, please use locally available material so that the transportation costs are minimized and use the material in the natural form so that you do not redo, you know, repair, etc. on a periodic time. Day lighting remains best of the option, you know, if are meeting your odd lighting requirement. For that, you will have to take care of the opening. You will have to see the buildings and the rooms are not designed in a manner that they are too deep and they should, in fact, all rooms should be designed in such a manner that each, uh, all the, even the remotest corner gets light, you know, and then you have north, south, east, west, four direction, which tells you when you are designing building, please make sure each building, each room has its requirement. So all your living rooms, which are, you know, habitable, where you live, that should have the best of the orientation. And then you can, there are like garages, like, you know, toilets, like stores, staircases, they can of course be put on the western side. That's where the design will come in. So you will have to make sure that you are placing window in height and in plan in such a manner that you have through and through cross ventilation when you require. And even your blocks are placed in a manner that you have benefits of all the natural ventilation. Because when you keep your buildings too close, they will shadow and they will not allow the winds to move from one building to another and they will also block your sun, etc. So therefore, when there are multiple blocks, they have to be taken care of. You can stagger them, don't put them in a line so that they all, everybody has a benefit of, you know, natural ventilation. We talk of the indoor air quality. People have not thought about, you know, why be, people become sick or healthy is for the reason what kind of quality of life within the building uh, they have. I said 80% of human life is spent within the building. So therefore, I think you must have the fresh air, uh, best of the air, you know, and the air which is not polluted. So this indoor air which impacts your health, comfort, productivity, and therefore, I think indoor air quality remains very, very important. In order to have best of the indoor air quality, please use materials which are green material, which do not have chemicals, you know, because if you use chemicals, if you use paints which have chemicals like formaldehyde, they will all be getting dissolved and they will be all polluting your air, which you will be inhaling all the time. Furniture you put in, the floor you put in, the roof you put in, please be very cautious because if you use a wood, don't allow it to be painted with, a, you know, paint which has formaldehyde or chemicals. Otherwise, you will be always inhaling those kind of chemicals which will make you sick. 
So therefore, take care of the material, take care of the quality, and use only green material within four walls so that they do not pollute the environment. In addition, you can use, make use of you know, certain plants which helps you know, like you have erica plant, snake plant, and a money plant. They're simple plants, they're always available. They are like shivas, you know. They're all the time absorbing carbon and they are giving you oxygen. And you can see if you put the plants within the rooms, you know, where you are uh, doing study, etc., you'll find the quality of indoor air will improve and you will become more fresh, will become more healthy, and will, you will become more productive. In addition to indoor air quality, we look at water efficiency. I think water remains very, very critical. We have to make sure that water consumption levels are reduced. How we can put it, that means all the water fixture will be you know, water efficient, number one. Number two, we have to make sure that water is not, because we only use 20% of the water supply and 80% of water goes into waste, you know. So that waste water will have to be recycled. So therefore, you re do the recycling, and that is what you know will reduce the water consumption level. In addition, the nature has given you the you know enough rainwater. You can do the rainwater harvesting. For you know you can collect that water, meet the water requirement in the hot air, in the you know time when there is water scarcity, or you can use the water in recharging the ground so that water percolates and enough water is stored inside. Please make sure that when you design building, you should have minimum footprints. You cannot have you know, more areas covered because if you cover less area, rest of the area, if you leave green, you know, they will help you in absorbing water and that will help you in recharging the groundwater. In addition, you are looking at not only energy efficiency, you are not looking at only the you know, water efficiency, you have looked at the interior, indoor air quality, you look at the material efficiency. So use material which is made of waste, you know. So it's a fly ash, it's a autoclave irrigate concrete which you can use, or you can use UPVC uh, doors and window which can help you making building green. I think you have to use material which are, uh, which are more productive, which can be created by nature, and bamboo remains one of the best options. It is said the researches are going on, and it is said bamboo is going to be the steel of 21st century. This is a picture which tells you the various elements which we have defined that make, you make use of them, and you will have a green building in addition to landscaping. This is the first green building built in India. That's the IGBC headquarter in 2003, you know. So if when we're looking at green building, you say to what extent building is a green? So I think there are certain parameters based on which buildings are evaluated. There are seven parameters. And Indian Green Building Council has mandated. There are 52 parameters on which a building is evaluated. 10 is mandatory, 42 are you know, others. And there are seven set of, you know, objects on which the building is evaluated. First, sustainable architecture and design. That goes into the merits of design, that what kind of uh, building you have designed. Then there can't be a better option for a building to be green unless it is designed as a green building. Then you have to have a best of the site, you know, and then it's planning. Then you look at water consumption, you look at energy consumption, you look at material and resources, you look at indoor environment quality, and then what innovation and you know, development you have done in order to make the buildings uh, much more sustainable and green. Cumulatively, these seven parameters, which are divided into 10 mandatory and 42 other, you know, that means there are 10 you have to comply with, 42 you can have the variables based on which you are evaluated, and then based on the marks code, you know, either you are certified, you are silver, you are gold, or platinum rated. 
Earlier there were super platinum, now this is merged into the platinum, you know. So that's the level of the certification and there are three agencies which are involved. That's IGBC, there is a Greha, there is a lead, you know, they in the country, they are doing this kind of rating agency, which tells you that to what extent the building has been designed as a green building. I would like to bring to your kind notice that now the government is looking at the option that how we can promote the concept of green building because the, you know, the 17 goals, sustainable development goals, goal 11 clearly says that cities and the buildings will have to be made sustainable and green building. And that remains the option. And that's what they are now giving incentive in the shape of additional FAR and, you know, certain rebate in your charges so that people come and accept it. Because once you do accept the philosophy of green building, you are not only benefiting yourself, you are benefiting the community. Let me conclude. A green building makes you happy, healthy and more productive. It provides highest quality of indoor environment quality. It optimizes the resources. It reduces waste. It reduces carbon footprints. It makes building operation cost effective and energy efficient. So this is a win-win situation for all human beings, for all communities, for all states, for all nations. And, you know, the globally, this world becomes more sustainable. Thank you very much. I think this presentation was just to create an awareness. I will I hope that with this presentation, the context of the building will be understood. The role and importance of green building will be appreciated. And we as professional would endeavor that the buildings are made green by working with nature so that we make optimum use of, you know, renewable resources, not non-renewable resources. And in addition to making us all healthy and productive, we are making this world more sustainable, livable for next generation. Thank you. Thank you very much.